behind closed doors. The Animal Liberation Front will continue to open those doors, liberate those animals, and expose those atrocities. There are no limits. Interfauna breed animals for vivisection. Their clientele consists of evil animal abuse establishments such as Huntingdon Research Centre, Unilever, Boots and Glaxo. As well as the UK, they supply to Europe and as far afield as the USA and Japan. In this raid, a total of 82 beagle pups and 36 New Zealand white rabbits were rescued. All had been brutally tattooed. They are now all enjoying a life of love and freedom. Two brave people were jailed for this action, so and nine months respectively. Both have now been released. On an evening visit to a so-called empty broiler unit, activists found 16 hens left behind, all in a very poor state, one still cuddled up to its dead colleague. These birds were removed to a life of freedom before incendiary devices damaged it. Due to financial loss, this hellhole in Sturminster Newton has ceased trading. action takes place in the form of an undercover investigation at the infamous Smith Klein Beecham Toxicology Lab. Many harrowing scenes were witnessed, such as an unforgettable, calculated and cowardly murder of a young healthy beagle dog. Rumour has it that the ELF planned a contamination attack on Smith Klein Beecham products namely Lucasaid. Other rumours say that the elf infiltrated Arnie computers with false information on a hoax. <laughs> this dilemma caused Lucasaid £6 million in lost sales and had £67 million wiped off its stock market value when it removed bottles from every shelf because detectives acted on faulty intelligence. Another summer evening and the elf enter the premises of Laundry Farm, Barton Road, Cambridge and liberate free ponies. Laundry Farm is a breeding centre owned by Cambridge University to supply animals for vivisection. It also supplies numerous laboratories, including the no notorious Adam Brooks Hospital in Cambridge. One of the biggest users of animals for Laundry Farm, Professor Roy Kahn, head of the Department of Medicine at Cambridge University. He specialises in transplants and the development of immunosuppressant drugs. The liberated ponies were all shaved around their middle and had obviously been opened up for surgery due to the stitches that ran down the centre of their bellies. The ponies all received veterinary attention and were placed in safe homes. Laundry Farm's dog unit houses mongrel dogs as these are the favourite tool of vivisector studying the rejection of transplants and the effects of immunosuppressant drugs. These dogs are believed to be stolen pets. Unfortunately, due to the heavy fortification and a sophisticated alarm system, the elf were unable to gain access to the dog unit.
Just over two weeks after the ALF raid, the Animal Liberation Investigation Unit carried out an inspection of Laundry Farm after a tip-off that they were experimenting on mongrel dogs, which were believed to have come from questionable and dubious store sources. A total of eight dogs were removed by the ALIU. Tragically, seven of them were confiscated by the Cambridgeshire Police and, the under, and under their decision were returned to Laundry Farm. The one remaining dog, a young black Labrador, tattooed and affectionately known as AP24, is in the safe hands of the ALIU. documents taken by the ALIU are always photocopied and returned in order not to contravene the theft act as their intention is not to permanently deprive the owners of their property. The unique aspect of the laundry farm inspection was that for the first time they decided to remove animals, namely the mongrels, as well as documentation. Under the Animal Scientific Procedures Act 1986, dogs used in experiments must be purpose-bred and preferably beagles obtained from credited breeders. These documents taken from Laundry Farm reveal that collies, crossbreeds and foxhounds are all used there. The ALIU keeps a reference library of all known lab, lab animal suppliers and breeders and nowhere are the above breeds mentioned. not enough to deal with, the ALF received information that a new animal house in Birmingham was in the process of being built. A timed explosive device was placed in this partly constructed building. Whether it was a warning or not, the device did not explode. The police and army bomb disposal squad were called in and a controlled explosion took place. Experts say that it was clearly made by people that knew what they were doing.